I've been doing the Devlin Flea for three years. I've been here four years. Dara has been here about how many years? Two years. I've been selling stuff at the flea market for about a year. Um, I used to have a crafts business and I used to come and do it at Christmas and I found it very successful. So I've uh, been out of work for a while so I just thought selling, as I call it, treasure uh, at the flea market was the way to go. We took, my partner Manuel took a stall here about three years ago actually. Uh, and uh, we'd done a few little bits and pieces before that but she wanted to give it a try so we came along and started to sell a few bits and pieces here you know and it's just been really successful for her anyway and all the hip hop happening earthy people come in and they don't say much but they like to pose and we're too cool to even talk to them I like China I love my cups and saucers and my China um, plates and things like that so I just started doing that and then I glasses and then I finally went into um, the furniture buying the furniture stripping it painting it and then selling it on gives me a chance to buy things that I can then have a read of or have a look at and try and then sell again you know so a lot of that goes on I think a lot of people come here and buy and sell stuff straight away you know so that happens a good bit yeah. and some really nice things like I've got a banjo up there like I fancy playing the banjo for a while you know so I could buy a banjo here realize that I wasn't going to play it and then sell it again you know so a lot of stuff like that happened. Johnny Vegas came in from Ideal and I got talking to him and I said are you on tour here and he said no mate he said I married a girl from Dublin I met her on Podge and Raj and I said that's really cool and then he said, does your ET work? And I said, it has no battery. Love going out and finding the stuff. Get up very early in the morning, but that's the buzz, is going out and finding that odd thing at a good price that you can do a bit of work on, tidy up. It's like the vintage bikes, that kind of stuff that you can fix up and then make a few quid on and then somebody gets themselves a good bargain. A girl came in here one day and she said, she said, I think you're gorgeous. And I said, well, I think you're lovely too. And she actually pulled her top down and said, would you give me a record for five euro with her breasts out? And I went, no, it's a 10 euro record. <laughs> that was it. Most of all of this is all mine. So if I buy something, it can, I bring it home, something has to come out. So basically all my stuff that I have is everything that I like. So it's, I know people either like it or they don't like it, but most of the time, I'm hitting the market with it and stuff like that. I lost my wife because <laughs> of here. I got married in June of last year and she left in October after 14 years together. And she didn't like my lifestyle. So she actually walked out and that's true. That's a very true story. And you know something? It's great. I suppose I'm peculiar when I'm a customer too, you know? Like if somebody comes up and they're taking photographs, they're not gonna buy anything, you know? And that's grand, but do you know, you can, I don't need to have a big conversation with those people and they really want to talk about it. So there's nearly a niche for somebody to go around here escorting people and talking about stuff and charging them for it. You know, because I, I don't want to spend, you know, half an hour reminiscing about some something that somebody else is trying to get rid of or something they want to buy, you know, and that's, there's a lot of that happens. So that's kind of peculiar or odd. And I wouldn't do that myself. I don't go to markets to reminisce. I've got to buy something, you know. So it's a really strange thing like that, but good fun too, you know. Yeah. I think yeah, people who are into vintage stuff are all a bit odd <laughs> myself, but um, we have people who would want to, there's one guy who wants to get everything off you for a euro, or you'd have, what I find funny is the young girls in their early teens and 20s who try and haggle with you, who don't really know how to haggle, stuff like that. That can be a bit fun. Because she's nuts. She doesn't like my lifestyle. She wanted me to wear a suit and work in a bank and, you know, mind cats and stuff. And I'm not mm. into that, like, I'm not into that. I mean, I remember one guy came with his family, he turned up and I was chatting to him. Uh, and he'd come over from uh, London, he was from Germany, he was holidaying in London. He'd heard about this on the internet, got a flight over on Ryanair and bang, straight here, you know. My best sale here was a record I'd spent 400 euro on and I sold it for 800 euro which was, uh, you, get, you get quite anal record collectors as well as the ordinary Dunn stores and Lidl collectors as well who want like 25 records for a euro. The record was by a band called Caterpillar from Germany. They were brutal. 
They only ever released two albums called Changes, and it, it's a horrendous album, but it made me 400 euro. So I was happy, and my mum knitted this hat as well. Now I have Parkinson's, so it takes me a long time to sort of get sorted and stuff. But no, as long as I do this, it's great. It's a, such a great social um, event for me once a month. Um, and I really look forward to it. And we all know each other now. We're kind of like a bond of people here that are here, um, the regulars every month. So that's been really, really good. Because before that, I was just applying on a monthly basis. And then last Christmas, they asked 20 of us to be regulars every month. So that is really, really done more of an outlet for me for my social life and stuff like that. Tips for hagglers, try harder, <laughs> is what I'd say. God forbid that you ever pay what somebody asks for, you know. And, and the watchword, the only word you need to know, is that your best? Is that your best? What's your best price? That's the thing. I'm always haggle, always haggle. Never haggle with me because uh, you should always give me whatever I ask, and that's always the way. No, I haggle, I, I definitely, I take the a book out, uh, or leaf out of Monty Python's book, and there's nothing as valuable as a good haggle. I'd even go so far as to say, sometimes it's not the sale, it's the prelude to the sale, you know? So a good haggle, nothing like it. I enjoy meeting the people and I enjoy the banter, really. It's a, it's a really cool place to be. Yeah, it's totally hip, totally hip. It's actually, it's fantastic. So it's a great, it's a great little market. It beats the hell out of uh, some of the flea markets because it's a lot more relaxed. You know, you've got your canopies, so you've got all weather. And by the way, there are no fleas. I've had a look, and there's never been any fleas. 